So I'll take you through this uh, presentation on how uh, we, we're doing uh, cholera surveillance uh, in South Sudan. And it's within the context of the integrated disease surveillance uh, and response uh, strategy. Uh, this is a strategy of the, the, the WHO African region. And uh, uh, it aims to integrate and ensure there is optimal use of, uh, of resources for surveillance and response, including improving uh, laboratory capacities largely focusing on, uh, on the district level, level as a major hub uh, for, for, for surveillance. But then we also have for in conflict uh, uh, affected settings uh, where the, the routine systems like IDSR are not functioning properly, we have what we call the early warning alert and response network which uses the same functions, only that this time um, um, it's largely the humanitarian partners that, uh, th that run the, the surveillance uh, services. So in South Sudan, we have, the, we, have the two, we have the two systems. One, the E1 running in the conflict-affected areas run by partners, and the IDSR in the other areas that are relatively uh, stable. So in terms of, uh, of, of how the country has rolled out uh, this strategy, um, we adopted the, the strategy as a country in 2006, uh, but consistent implementation started uh, around 2009 uh, with support from, uh, from USAID. And uh, by 2013, the strategy had been rolled out to all the, the 10 states and, and, and 80 countries then you remember 2013 December is when the, the, the current conflict started. So E1 was set up then uh, in, the, in the areas where the national surveillance system was not uh, functioning optimally. So currently this is how the, 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 the data flows. Um, from the lower levels, these are the, the different uh, facility levels, hospital, primary uh, care center, primary health care unit. Usually, um, th the reports uh, are entered uh, into paper-based uh, aggregate files. So from this level, they are submitted to the county health department, CHD stands for county health department. So at this level, um, the reports are aggregated and uh, then entered into into the electronic uh, platform, which we call EWAS, the early warning alert and response system. Primarily, it was developed to support reporting in the conflict-affected areas, but has now been rolled out to support even reporting in IDSR. So from the county, once the report uh, is submitted, it's received at the same time at the state and at the at the national national level. So, um, uh, since uh, May last year, we've embarked on uh, on a process of uh, of expanding uh, electronic reporting uh, countrywide, uh, moving it down to, to the facilities uh, to the facility level, and. Uh, we want to use um, um, any with the, the the system is is electronic and uh, supported by by any of the mobile devices, either mobile phone or a laptop or a desktop computer. And uh, in doing this, we've been working in collaboration with the Global EWAS EWAS project. Uh, this project uh, is largely targeted to countries in, in conflict, in humanitarian settings. And uh, uh, just we've been working uh, with a team um, to support the Minister of Health uh, and Partners uh, in several ways, one through technical support, uh, through training, and through provision of, uh, of field-based tools. Um, the system is so user-friendly to respond to emergencies and can uh, rapidly be configured within a, a, a short time. 
Uh, last year, when there was an uh, unable outbreak in Equatoria province, uh, the system actually was was deployed to support um, reporting of of Ebola alerts uh, in that part of of the country. So it's largely designed for frontline workers, um, especially those working in remote remote settings, and. Uh, it, it helps uh, in three main areas. One in the collection, analysis, and interpretation of, uh, of data. All these processes are automated, and we'll see how it does that. It can trigger alerts of new disease outbreaks, and uh, it can be used to monitor confirmed outbreaks. So it does this through three main functions. Um, surveillance, so collecting aggregate data reports that are reported on, uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, it can also be used for flagging alerts, uh, alerts that are above the threshold, and it can support outbreak response and line listing, as illustrated um, here in the picture. So those are the main, uh, main functions um, s supported. So that's how we can eventually use it for, for cholera, through one flagging new reported events of cholera. So a single case of cholera reported would flag an alert in the system. And then when an outbreak is confirmed, we can be we can use the system to to line list cases. So this is how the kit uh, kit looks like. Um, for very remote areas you may need a server to boost the signal, but essentially we use Phones, a phone is enough. Uh, in very rural areas without power, you need uh, the, these are power banks. And then at the CHD, um, a laptop may be necessary to, to provide uh, support to a number of facilities. Um, all that is required is, uh, is a mobile network. And uh, with these power banks, you don't need uh, solar powered power banks, you don't need uh, 24 uh, uh, electricity supplies. So in terms of uh, how uh, the information uh, flows, we still use uh, the paper-based registers because we've not, uh, electronic medical records have not been introduced. So the data gets uh, collected at the facility level into the paper-based OPD register. Uh, it's then summarized uh, into tally sheets. So this is the routine information. The data is then entered into the still the paper-based facility weekly reporting forms. So and it's from those forms that the data is then entered into, into the forms and is submitted. So and once it is submitted, uh, from the facility level, it gets uh, uh, received at all these levels at, at the same time. So in terms of uh, cholera surveillance, um, we, within the context of IDSR, we use um, the IDSR uh, case definition for cholera, which is well described in the technical guidelines. These are the technical guidelines for surveillance that we use. It also lays down the, the, the guidelines for, for, for surveillance. So the definition has a more detailed standard case definition for the facility, and it breaks it down for areas where there's an outbreak, and for areas, for areas where there's an outbreak, and for areas where there's an outbreak, and a more simplified version which is used at the, at the community level. So these are the definitions that are used to determine who, who is a suspect at the community and at the facility, at the facility level for reporting uh, in the system. So ideally, through using the same system, uh, a cholera case would either be detected at the, at the community and reported to the nearby facility, or the case themselves would feel unwell and seek care at the facility level. And then at the facility level, if the 
case meets the case definition as we've seen uh, on the previous slide. Um, there will be an immediate notification uh, uh, to the state, to the state and county um, through notification using the, the, the application. And uh, this would eventually find its way to, to, to the national, national level and eventually it would get uh, picked uh, by WHO. Um, however, sometimes th there are other loops that I've not shown here. It's also common that uh, a case would probably be reported from, uh, from the county here to, to the WHO field office um, before it reaches uh, even to the, to the state and national level. So there are other pathways I've not shown here. Some of these, so I've only shown this uh, for simplicity of illustrating how the, the information uh, ideally flows. But due to the, the gaps in the system, sometimes you find uh, a case can even be reported from, from the community directly to, to WHO or from the community here or the facility to the national ministry before it gets to, to the state, depending on the accessibility in the, in, the, in the area. Some areas are more accessible through the capital than through the state capital. So you may find the information reaching the national capital before it reaches the state capital. So and once... Uh, um, if I ask you to, to speed it up a bit because... Okay, okay. Nine presentations. So this is the channel now that will be followed um, to do the initial verification. And if, it, 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 if, if its uh, verification shows the report is valid, the rapid response teams would be dispatched, ideally initially from the state. Uh, and depending on the scale or, or the need, the state rapid response team may call for support from, from the national level. And once there is a confirmation, that would call for activation of the, of the task force. Uh, then in terms of uh, having the information uh, registered uh, in the system, once uh, the case meets the case definition, it gets entered into the paper-based alert log and paper-based uh, alert line list. And uh, from these paper-based forms, it gets entered into we have an event-based event platform on our elect electronic platform that uh, allows immediate notification. And for confirmed outbreaks, there is also a platform that allows you to line list uh, even using your phone at the facility level. And uh, once that data is entered at the facility level, then it, it will get uh, received at the state and national level, including the county level at, uh, at real time, uh, in real time. And then once the data is also entered into the system, it's linked to, to a pre-formatted uh, situation report that, that also gets updated as the data is entered into, into the system. Um, just to show you some screenshots um, from, from the system. Um, this is um, the aggregate reporting uh, template of uh, platform where the data uh, that is reported on a weekly basis is entered, including uh, if there are suspected cases of cholera. Then we have, um, we have the event-based platform. This is where you can register a new alert for cholera. Uh, this is immediately notifiable without any verification. You, have, you use this platform to send any new alerts of any epidemic-prone disease. And then the same platform for every alert, it allows you to register details on the case verification, risk assessment, risk characterization, and in the eventual outcomes after the, the investigations. So once the outbreak is confirmed, uh, the platform also allows for line listing. So this is where, uh, and you enter individual cases, so each Individual record is entered separately and submitted using this template. And these are the different uh, records now entered uh, into the platform. So this is essentially the line list itself uh, in the system. 
and uh, that is linked to a situation report that gets updated as as the data is is entered into into the system um, so I think that should be it um, thank you.